Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone's well. Thanks again for joining us a little bit earlier. Um, yeah, much appreciated. Um, we we'll start as normal, so Sky will get us started with Gary, who's like fresh in his kitchen, I think, at the moment. Um, and then we'll, anyone else who does want a question during the broadcast part, please raise your hand. Move on to the daily's briefing after, which is embargoed until 10.30 p.m. tonight. We ask that there's no live streaming of the press conference or any social media postings until afterwards. Gary, I'm going to come to you first. If anyone else does have a question during broadcast, please raise your hand. Gary, I'm just unmuting you. Perfect. Thank you, Simon. Hello, Jose. Um, um, medical report then from the returning players from the national teams. All, all good, maybe apart from Eric Dyer. Part of Eric Dyer, yes. So Eric is uh, is the only one that arrived with a problem, a problem that maybe I I cannot confirm yet to you because it's Friday, twelve thirty still. But that maybe will keep him out of this match against West Ham. Maybe, but not definitely. No. And Harry Kane obviously played the whole game against Denmark. You, overall, though, were you happy with the way England used him? He arrived not injured. He arrived in conditions to, to start a match on, on Sunday. And that is the, the most important thing for me. Um, Gareth Bale, obviously everyone wants to know whether or not he'll make his second debut. You said that um, you'll do what's best for the team, obviously, but also that you know it's also about Harry. Um, uh, Gareth uh, Gareth needs to be happy. I think you said, um, but he wants to play, doesn't he? I guess after everything. Of course, he wants to play. He wanted to play since the day he arrived and was not was not possible um you know i i'm not going to tell you if he's going to play or not uh what i can tell you is that he is working very well probably is working the way he was not able to do for quite a, a long time uh, the last week especially this week and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, the, um, the planning of the sessions had a, a big focus on, on him and he is in, in pretty good uh, condition. So is he playing Sunday or Thursday? Uh, I don't know. Uh, he doesn't know. We didn't uh, make a decision yet. But what I can say is the same that I, I told you yesterday. The team is the most important thing. Um, to win against West Ham is the only thing that matters uh, in this moment. But every player is, is a very important player. But uh, the Garrett situation is, is quite special because of his history in the past couple of, of seasons. We care as much about him as he cares about Tottenham and um, we are going to, to make the best decision for him and for the team. How great is it to see him with a, a big smile on his face again? We are all happy with that and uh, it's, it's great to listen from Sergio Reguilón that shared uh, the dressing room with him in, in Madrid. It's great to listen from Sergio that Garrett looks uh, a different guy. So if he's happy with us and then he goes home and he can share that happiness with, with family is the, the best thing that can happen to, to him. But he needs his football. He needs to feel a top player again. And um, that's why I'm saying uh, all the decisions that we are going to make with him, I'm not saying for him, I'm saying with him. Uh, all the decisions will be thinking first about the team, but never forgetting what is the best for him. 
I always look to the future and it's not about, you don't like these stats being brought up, but I'll bring it up anyway. Never lost a Premier League game to David Moyes. Uh, won most of them. Can I just ask you though, what kind of job you think he's now doing at West Ham? Is he starting to point them in, in the right direction? No doubt. No doubt. Um, I think he has his stuff. He has a stuff he feels empathy, he feels confident with. Of course, to come in the middle of the season like we did, because it happened the same to me, is never easy. We come like uh, we come like the fireman. Uh, come to a house when the house is is on flames. It's difficult, but then the next season uh, is always a different season. So you got some you got some new players. I think is is getting now another another great player from from Brentford. Um, they have stability. They know him. He knows them. They are getting results. The performances are are very positive. Um, some critics of of last season about being too defensive, which I don't agree because in the context they were uh, last season, every point was a crucial point. Uh, this season they are showing uh, that they have. Uh, a completely different philosophy. Very good team, very difficult opponent, and um, big game for us because we we need to win. Uh, the points we got, they were all away uh, at home, one defeat and one draw, and we have to try to make our house even without fans. But we have to try to make our house a very difficult place for everybody to come. Thank you, Jesse. Hi, Jesse. How are you doing? You good? Uh, you talk there about Gareth Bale. You don't know whether or not he's going to start, or you're not telling us where he's going to start. But surely it's impossible, isn't it, to change a team that's just won six-one away at Man United? If Dyer cannot play, I have to change. You know what I mean? Though? I mean, the idea is you, you keep a winning team and if a team has done so well for you, I mean, apart from injuries, it would be, you, have, you surely have to give everyone the shirt, don't you? You know, every match is a different match. Um, I think it is quite an old, an old, say, team that win, you don't touch. You can touch because matches are different matches. And in our case, uh, we are going again to a succession of matches where I want the players to think only about one, but I have to think of the series of matches that we are going to to have. So I have to build teams ready to to compete in every competition, in every match, and I think is is a great uh, occasion, um, especially because everything closes today, even the the markets involve the um, EFL uh, clubs and players. I think it's a great opportunity to publicly thank my my boss, my my board, Mr. Levy, the structure, Steve, everybody involved in in the transfer window, because what uh, what they did for the team was uh, was amazing in such a difficult period, where uh, I always believed that we were not able to to reach. Uh, some of of the targets, some of the needs. Uh, the club made an incredible effort. Um, Mr. Levy showed once more that when when he wants and when he is really involved, he is um, he's genius in the way he, he makes deals happen. And I can only publicly thank them for what they gave to the to the team. And now it's for me, for my staff, for the players to answer in a, in a positive way and to have a good season. 
This week, everyone was talking about the project Big Picture, which um, has been ditched now. But I, I was just wondering what your opinion was, because obviously football in this country is more than just Spurs, West Ham, more than just the Premier League. It's about the pyramid as well. <clears throat> How in your, in your way do you think it would be best that we can help every club in this country? You know, the project is that. Rest in peace. And I have not much to to say about it. Uh, does football, especially the biggest football in the world, which is the football that we play in this, in this country, has to be, uh, I'd say, rethinking, re yeah, rethinked? Uh, of course, yes. But of course, has to be good for, uh, for everybody and not just for a certain a certain elite so that project is is that hopefully people can can work in different projects but a project that satisfy everybody okay we're going to move it along now because there's a lot of people wanting to ask questions Faye, i'm just unmuting you Faye for others. thanks hi jose um Hello. Uh, you said that West Ham have a different philosophy this season. So what kind of threat are you expecting from them on Sunday? You know, um, the game against Arsenal was, in my opinion, a great performance with a very unfair result. And they built from that game and then they had again very impressive performances with the good results with the clean sheets with the defensive stability but with the threat uh, they are very dangerous in counter-attack they are very dangerous in set pieces they have very powerful people in uh, in this moment of the game the set the offensive set pieces and um they are defending with with the back line of uh, a five plus another line of four, uh, leaving Antonio up front. So if they follow the same the same direction, is a really really difficult opponent. Just finally, the fans are obviously really excited about the prospect of Bale, Kane, and Son playing together. It may be it must be close, even if it's not going to be on Sunday. How excited are you as manager of Tottenham Hotspur about the prospect of those three playing together? We have a squad where uh, every player has to fight a lot and play very, very well to deserve a place in the, in the team. So I believe that you can see Bale and Sonny playing together. I believe that you can see Sonny and Bale both on the bench. And I believe that you can see Bale and Son also both together enjoying a hot tea in, in a box. The squad is so, so good. It's so, so strong. We have so many, so many options that I refuse to say this player is a first choice because if you are a first choice today, you are going to be a, a second choice probably in the next match and vice versa. The squad is very, very strong. Hello, Jose. Um, you've called Daniel Levy a genius. So I'm just wondering, you, you went to him with your targets. How many of the targets did you get? Is that you near enough? You must be happy. You've got every player you wanted at the beginning of the window. Almost. But with us, football coaches, is is always the almost. Uh, a part of some ultra-privileged guy that can get everything he wants especially in, in one of these teams that don't comply with the financial fair play, a part of one of these guys, for us, is almost, 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 and never the way we, uh, we want. But it was fantastic. It was more than I was expecting. In, in my analysis of, of the team and the team needs and the team uh, evolution, uh, we were speaking about different targets, but I never thought that we would go uh, so far as we did, especially because of, of the moment. And uh, I can only praise 
what uh, what the board did for the um, for the team, and I can feel even in in the players this feeling that I love, which is the feeling of they are happy, but they are worried. Uh, they are happy that the squad is is good. They are happy to see people coming and making the squad better, but at the same time they are worried. Uh, about themselves, they are worried about: Am I going to play or not to play? This is the kind of a feeling that you have in in the top teams, and we are having that now. You mentioned the, the potential. I know you don't want to talk about it individually, but for you, this has got to be one of the most lethal strike forces you could potentially manage. I know you managed great ones before, but this is up there, isn't it? With the number of of players, yes. Uh, of course, I had. Incredible attacking uh, attacking forces. Uh, I remember, for example, my first season in in Inter, and was not the season we won the travel. Uh, the strikers were Ibrahimovic, Adriano, Hernan Crespo, and I had these in more than one than one club. But uh, looking just to the attacking three positions. Uh, Kane and Vinicius, uh, uh, Son, Bergwin, Bale, Lamel, uh, uh, Lucas, and maybe I forgot uh, somebody. Especially on these three attacking positions, is is top quality and um, and great numbers. And the last one for me, um, Arsenal winners got a book out. And you don't seem to get a mention. I was just wondering if you know why. Sorry. Say it again, Jules. We couldn't hear you. To be honest, uh, Arsene Wenger has a book out. There's no mention of you in it at all. So I was just wondering if you know why. Because he never beat me. If you are not going to do a chapter about twelve or fourteen matches and never win, <laughs> never win one. So why should he speak about me in his book? A book is. Is a thing to make you happy, to make you proud. So I understand perfectly the the situation. Hi there, Jose. Um, Giovanni Lachelzo and Jaffa Tanganga pulled out of their international um, duty. Are they both fit for the weekend? No, no. They are still injured. Yeah. Yeah. What is the Chelsea's problem? Is it a ham? Is it the hamstring? Yeah. yeah. Is yeah, it going to be a, a long, a long one? Don't think so. I would say next week. Next week. Okay. Say, um, probably next week. Hey there, Jose. Hey. Um, just want to ask you, you mentioned him there briefly, uh, Carlos Vinicius. You've had a couple of weeks to kind of work with him firsthand. I mean, what have you made of him so far and how he's settled in and, and could he play any part in something? Yeah, he can play. He can play, of course. Uh, never easy to come from uh, a different country, a different football. Um, it's never easy when you don't speak... Um, the language, but incredible, incredible support, incredible friendship immediately from some of the guys. Uh, Lucas took immediately care of, uh, of him. Of course, the communication with the staff um, helps. He needs to adapt to the intensity of this, of this work, to the intensity of this football. But yes, ready to, ready to play. So. If you want to know, I can tell you. Uh, Harry Kane starts, and uh, and Vinicius will be on on the bench for for Sunday. Uh, apologies, but I'm conscious to other people wanting to ask questions. But it's one question each now, so I'm going to go Charlie and finish with Jerry. Charlie, if we share. Hi, Jose. Uh, you mentioned there hey, um, about Gareth. You said. You know, he's been working very well in a way that he could not for quite a long time. Is that just a physical thing or is that an environmental thing as well? No, it's a physical thing. He didn't have, uh, he didn't have any pre-season. And even in the period uh, after the lockdown, he didn't participate in, in much with, uh, with Real Madrid. And then 
he plays a couple of matches with with Wales, and uh, he had an injury uh, there. So it's not just about coming and needs a week of work to be to be at the level. You know, is is more global than than that, and uh, we don't want him to to be rushed. We want him to feel comfortable. We want him to to make the decision of yes, I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready to go. You know, is is more about is more about that. So. But he's, he's working so well, so well, and uh, just evolution in everything, in every in every data, in every aspect of uh, of his condition. So he's there. He's there. Probably he plays he plays um, Sunday. If he doesn't, he will on Thursday. But he's he's there. He's very very close. Okay, Jerry. Last question, please. Hi, Jose. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can. I don't know if you know this, but a body language expert has been studying footage of you on the touchline and in press conferences. And her, oh my God. <laughs> her conclusion is that you look happier and more energized than you have done for a couple of years. Is that how you feel? So, no, they don't see that I have an injury on my right shoulder. No? It's getting better. <laughs> no, I'm happy. Of course I'm happy. I'm happy since I arrived. To be honest, I don't know what the experts saying, say about my body language, but I'm happy since I arrived. But of course, last season, as I was saying before, for me, for Moise, for, for these guys that we get the job mid-season, it's never easy. And you get through problems and you have to adapt. And you have ups and downs, and last season was so difficult for uh, uh, for us. So of course there were moments where I was not so happy. Um, this season, I'm happy, uh, totally happy with the with the squad that the club uh, gave me. Uh, very very happy, of course, with with my players and uh, with my staff and the motivations that we have. I think the challenge and the target that I put to the team, and I told you, uh, I didn't hide from you, I think was a good way for us to feel happy about it, uh, which is we are not here to win any title. We are not here to, to win any cup. We are not here with any target apart of we want to win the next match. And... Uh, this is the way we are uh, we are working. There is not one single match this season where we don't want to win and we are not going to win. I told that before Man United. Could be we go there and we lose, like we lost against Everton, and like we are going to lose uh, other matches during this season. But to go to every match with this feeling, we want to win and only three points uh, make us uh, happy. I think was the good way of communication with the uh, with the players, and we are happy this this way. The players are enjoying the way we we are working, the way we are playing, and let's go. And in the end of the season, we will see what happened. Let's see what we did. But in this moment, ma match after match, nothing changed for us. Only one target: win the next match. Okay, thank you for the broadcast. Press conference, so we'll move on to the newspaper briefly now. But